From years of anxiety to warrior and mentor, Bradley Robinson created the Anxiety Project to help you end your anxiety naturally. Let's mold the new you and let's end anxiety together. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Project podcast number 46. I am Brad Robinson here with you and this episode is all about the unconscious. The unconscious mind, so powerful. We should be learning about the unconscious mind in school. When we're little kids, I only learned about it when going through my anxiety recovery, figuring out my body, figuring out how it operates. And once I found out how the unconscious mind operates, I started to use the unconscious mind as a tool. And I started to work with my unconscious mind to get better. So why should we learn about the unconscious mind? Well, it is our deepest level of programming. It makes up 95% of the mind body. I want to repeat that. That is absolutely huge. It makes up 95% of the mind body. We only use 5% of the conscious mind. So it's like the iceberg. The little bit sticking out of the water is the conscious mind and the 95% of the unconscious, which is all under the water, that is our deepest level. Think about all the memories, all the trauma, all our habits. That is where they are stored, all under the water. If we do not update it, releasing repressed emotional issues, resolving these traumas. Like a computer getting a virus, we get sick. We get sick. You always update your computer or phone. If you don't, you're going to get a virus. You're going to get sick. If you hold on to this trauma, these bad experiences... You're just going to hold on to the emotion of that trauma. You're going to keep reliving that trauma over and over again, causing stress on the body. T T cells lower, you get sick. You get sick. When we understand the unconscious, we can then work with it to recover from anxiety and trauma. The aches and pains, the distressing thoughts that do not seem to go away, even after multiple doctor visits, are a sign from the unconscious that there are issues that need to be resolved. The body is always telling you something. It's always telling you something, even after you're going to the doctors and they... they, they, they say you're healthy, but you still have the pain. You still have the aches. And you don't know why. There's something else there. Something from the unconscious mind telling you that pain is linked to a specific trauma. Now, let us go into more detail on what the unconscious is all about. First, The unconscious stores memories. Second, it makes associations. Like, when you enter an environment that resembles an environment from your past where you had a panic attack, the fear response perceives this new environment as a threat. 
it has made associations to the details of the first environment where you had a panic attack before. Now, you are reliving the first panic attack, but in a new environment. But the details in that new environment are are similar to the ones in the first environment where you had that other panic attack. The associations the unconscious made during that first panic attack are now activated when you encounter them again. The fear response is unconscious. You might not know what is causing you to panic. But the unconscious mind knows. You may have a hard time figuring out the root cause, but there is a reason why you feel panic. Third, the unconscious represses memories with unresolved negative emotion. During traumatic events, and trauma can be anything highly emotional. Anything highly emotional, anything that goes beyond your boundaries. The unconscious takes a picture seconds before the height of the trauma. Say you're sitting in class in high school and you you put up your hand to answer a question and then your voice cracks or your voice stutters and all the kids start to laugh. What happens? You feel embarrassed. You feel ashamed. You kind of feel, you kind of feel like the odd one out. At this moment, your unconscious takes a picture of the event, of the situation. Kind of, kind of pauses consciousness. Kind of backs up a few seconds, takes a photo, and it stores within your unconscious. You might relive an experience from your past over and over again of this picture. This picture holds the emotions, holds the memory, the situation within your unconscious mind. Like an icon on your computer. So it stores a photo in it onto your desktop, which is your unconscious mind. But the picture is three-dimensional. It's three-dimensional. You may find yourself going back to that moment where the trauma took place and reliving it and and the same emotions come up, the same emotions you felt during that trauma. The unconscious presents repressed memories for resolution. Absolutely huge. And this could be in the form of a pain or sensation. Pain in your side, heaviness on your chest, uh, lower back pain, any pain throughout your body. And the picture keeps coming up in your mind during the day and you continue to repress it. So you may find yourself on the subway, at work, eating dinner, wherever, and then this memory pops up into your head of this event, this traumatic event. And you then relive it. You go through it. You, 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 you feel the same emotions you felt when the event actually happened. And so this is what the unconscious is telling you. This is what the unconscious is telling you. Please, here's this memory that affected you. Let's resolve it. And that's why the unconscious is sending you that signal. So you can resolve it, but most people don't know how. Because we're not taught how. The unconscious is where emotions come from. Like I said before, you know, when you relive that experience, you relive the same emotion. The unconscious also runs on habits. 
So be careful what you act out. The more you engage in certain behaviors or the more you entertain certain thoughts, the more unconscious they become. Absolutely huge. You end up doing them unconsciously. When you begin to ingrain and engage in new habits, habits that go against your old self specifically, you then start to stimulate new neuronal pathways. It takes 21 days to run a habit unconsciously. So the more you act out something, the more you entertain certain thoughts, the more they are ingrained within your unconscious mind. Your unconscious mind runs on habits. The unconscious will always want to take the path of least resistance. That is why you may find it difficult to consistently engage in new habits. You kind of feel like you're getting pulled back into your old ways. That is because it's, it wants to keep doing what it's familiar with. It wants to keep engaging in the habits that it already knows. So if you've been practicing anxiety for years, your unconscious is running on those thoughts. It's running on those behaviors. So when, when you try to engage in new habits, what happens then? What happens then? Well, you're going to experience a lot of resistance. You're going to make excuses. It's too difficult. Well, of course it's too difficult. The unconscious doesn't want these new habits. It only wants to keep doing what it's familiar with. But it's important that you keep engaging in the new habits all the time. It's important because you're stimulating new pathways and you are telling the unconscious what you want instead by engaging in these healthy new habits, these new ways of thinking. And the more you do it, the more it becomes unconscious, the more the unconscious gets used to it. So it takes 21 days. It typically takes three months for someone to overcome anxiety because there's lots of habits to introduce and implement. And so it's a long process to create a new character, to create a new you. It takes a long time, but it happens every day. I see it happen with my clients. They overcome anxiety in two to three months because they continuously engage in new habits. They, they are always learning. They're always working hard. They're always moving away from their old self. The unconscious transmits energy. The unconscious transmits energy. Absolutely crucial to understand. All the trauma stored, depending how heavy it is, can transmit negative energy onto the outside world. Someone with heavy trauma, heavy baggage, you can feel that, you can sense that. You, you might feel that when you're around negative coworkers or negative family members, you can feel the heaviness, you can feel the baggage. So you can pick up on someone's energy in a matter of seconds. And someone's energy, it radiates about eight feet from them. That's how powerful this energy is. That's how powerful the trauma is that you're holding on to. I bet you, you, you have said this. I bet you, you've said this. The energy of that party was negative or stressful. I bet you, you heard that before or even said that, you know, that energy there, it just, it just was so intense. The energy there was, was so 
exciting. We can pick up the energy of other people, the energy of society as a whole. Yes, you can pick that up. It, the energy of where you live, the location of where you live, you can pick that up. So understanding the unconscious, as you can see, is crucial for getting over anxiety because the unconscious runs on habits. It's our deepest level of programming. It makes up 95% of the mind-body. 95%. Everyone has trauma to also. Everyone has trauma. Everyone has trauma where they experienced an event or situation that affected them emotionally. They were highly emotional during that event. Everyone has that. And everyone can release this trauma. Everyone can. So it's so important to understand the unconscious. And it's important to understand that you can work with it. The unconscious is your friend. But it's, it's knowing how to. And that's why I am recording this podcast and, and talking about the unconscious is so that we can begin to understand it and then work with it because it's actually your friend. It wants the best for you. That's why it's sending those icons, those pictures of the traumatic event to the surface so that you can release it. That's what it's saying. It's like, you know what, Brad, here's this event. You know, I'm going to pop this event back up into your mind. You know, you're going to think about it for a minute or two or a few seconds so that you can release it. Pay attention to this issue. You haven't resolved it. So it's sending up these, these memories and these memories cause emotions. It can cause you to have a bad day. You keep reliving these old events can cause you to have a bad day. You're reliving the same emotions that you had when you experienced this trauma. And that's where I want to leave this podcast today. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of the Anxiety Project podcast. Remember, do not let anxiety define who you are. And I will see you on next week's episode. Bye, everybody. For more podcast episodes, for more video content, and one-on-one -on -one coaching with me via Skype, visit www.unpluganxiety.com for everything you need to know about ending anxiety naturally. I love you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.